built to last as long as time. Never blind to their duties as aristocrats, the knights encouraged and developed the arts. Perhaps that dedication to the arts is best illustrated here in St. John's Co Cathedral in Valletta. This splendid marble group representing the baptism of Christ was carved out by Giuseppe Mazzuoli in 1674. Two artists in particular dominate the cathedral. Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio spent some time in Malta and in 1608 was made a Knight of Obedience of the Order of St. John. Caravaggio was a complex character. His vivid, realistic religious scenes often shocked. The beheading of St. John the Baptist in the oratory of St. John's is often considered his finest work. It is a scene of squalid brutality in the yard of a prison. St. John faces the floor his hands tied behind him. His head is partly severed and blood wells from the neck. The impatient turnkey looks on while the executioner seizes the blood-soaked hair of the martyr and draws a knife to sever the holy head. The platter is held by a maidservant of Herodias, waiting to deliver the head to her mistress Salome, and an old frightened woman seems to fear for the future of the world at this barbarity. Caravaggio's treatment of light and shadow marked a new dimension in art. His Saint Jerome shows the holy man emaciated by his penances, sitting on the couch, writing. Mattia Preti was born in Taverna, Calabria, in 1613 and admitted as a Knight of Grace of the Order in 1642. Preti was one of the major Baroque decorators of his time. He was responsible for the vault of the church and contributed many paintings to the Order. pavement and its marble gravestones is a stunning memorial to the perennial urge of the knights to perpetuate their memory. With the age of chivalry long gone, the knights had become something of an anachronism as benevolent despots. Certainly by 1789, they were too medieval in their outlook to withstand the winds of change blowing across Europe with the French Revolution.
Grandmaster Hompesh, who took the order's helm in 1797, still belonged to the Ancien Régime. Many of his knights, particularly the French, had Republican sympathies. And in 1798, the island was surrendered to Napoleon, almost without a shot being fired. The rule of the knights was ended. There's hardly a place in Malta which does not bear to this day some more or less marked traces of the knight's rule. The names of Malta and the order became closely linked, inseparably interwoven, and the warrior monks have ever since been designated Knights of Malta, and their eight-pointed cross is even now known by the name the Malta Cross. But the story does not end there. Since 1838, the Knights have been based in Rome and have concentrated on their hospitaller vocation. There are now 43 national associations which, apart from the religious life of their members, concentrate on hospitaller work. And there are some 10,000 members of the order. As well as administering and supporting many hospitals, the order is active in providing aid and medical help when national disasters occur or refugees need assistance. The hierarchy of the order remains the same, with noble birth still a prerequisite. The current Grand Master is Fra Andrew Barty. Johannes, can you explain the work of the order today? We're doing what we've always done. We're trying to promote the religious development of our own people and looking after the poor, the sick, the refugees and the handicapped. Are there any specific instances that we would see this work going on? Well, you might have uh, seen what we were doing recently in Hungary when the East German refugees came over. We've got uh, Leprosaria in Africa and South America, first aid corps in Ireland, Germany, Austria, and we're setting one up in Hungary now. The French have a very good ambulance service, which they are running. We've got hospital in London and uh, some old people's homes there. In fact, all over the world, we've got a different sort of hospital activities going on. As we go into the 1990s, how relevant do you think the work of the Knights will be? Very relevant because, unfortunately, we're always going to have the sick and the handicapped with us. <clears throat> and our, in the 900 years of our history, we've always looked after them, and we're going to go on doing that. Very, very close links with Malta. Um, the Maltese people, do you feel that they welcome the Knights? Yes, I think they do, because it's now nearly 200 years since the order left. They no longer consider that we may have been oppressors. I didn't think we were particularly a conquering nation or anything like that. And I think they appreciate the uh, benefits that the order brought to the island. And I think it did bring a lot, and it enriched the island um, culturally uh, quite a bit with its beautiful buildings, and, and it helped with the agriculture. It set up uh, hospitals, universities, and things like that. And I think they can now look back um, on the period when we were here with pride and even happiness. In 1989, the Knights returned to Malta for the first time in 200 years to meet and discuss their history, their legends, their current work, and how they can once again strengthen their ties with this island state. The 
importance of the Knights of St. John. As we all know, the Knights of St. John is more in the association which the Knights have with Malta, in the sense that Malta is still the island of the Knights, insofar as architecture is concerned, insofar as palaces and the auberges of the Knights are concerned, insofar as Valletta itself is so much a creation of what the knights wanted to see to be the capital city of their principality. Obviously today the knights have a totally different dimension. The knights are no longer, although they have the right of sovereignty at international law, but they have returned, I think, to their own fundamentals, namely being an order that looks after the sick, the aged, and those in need. I think that is the main function of the order today. With this sovereign order, we've had the diplomatic relations uh, ever since our independence, which means roughly 25 years ago, we've had diplomatic relations with the order. And uh, the order has been present here through blood bank and other methods of cooperation. And uh, we believe that uh, with the order, Malta can continue its historical ties, uh, giving perhaps a future to our past things. As the knights once again celebrate mass in St. John's Cove Cathedral, we can reflect on their history and their contribution to our civilization. Their legacy is all around them, and their contribution to our future in terms of their work with the poor and sick will ensure their valued existence into the 21st century. The Knights are a tangible link with our past, an embodiment of a basic human desire to protect our freedom and care for our needy. Principles the world will embrace for as long as mankind values and respects the indomitability of the human spirit.